explaining where I've been, what's been going on, all that good stuff. So, I never really, like, I never intentionally took a break from the channel. Um, there were just a lot of things coming up in my life, and I was going through a long, um, transitional moving process and everything. Um, because when I was moving out of my last apartment, I didn't have, like, a new place to live yet, um, like, set up. So, and I was still kind of deciding where I wanted to go next. I knew I wanted to bounce out of Atlanta, but I didn't exactly know where I wanted to go. So, um, then I decided, um, well, then what happened was my sister offered for me to stay at her place, um, in that time before I, you know, decided where I was going to go, which was really nice and really great. She lives in a house with her boyfriend and her, um, other roommate. They, they both have, like, another roommate, so there's three of them total. And they have an extra, um, spare guest bedroom, so that's where I was staying, and they were very nice to let me stay there rent-free, um, so I could save up some money for my move and everything. Oh, and then I got in, like, a, a, this obnoxious car accident. Luckily, um, no one was hurt or anything, so it was, you know, um, by that measure already, like a minor accident, but, um, really the headache came from the insurance company and the, um, the car shop that was working on my car. They took eight weeks for a repair that oh, should have only taken, like, one to two. Um, and it's because they kept deciding that it was totaled and then deciding it was not totaled, and it was this whole, like, crazy thing, and the insurance agent would tell me one thing, but the guy at the car shop would tell me something else, so I'm sure other people can relate to this. Accidents are never fun, whether or not, like, you know, um, whether or not you have to pay some sort of citation if you're at fault, or even if you're not at fault in the accident, um, by law, like, there are still headaches and still things to go through, so, um, luckily this particular accident, accident, I was not at fault, but I have been at fault for once in the past, so I'm not gonna, like, you know, be on some high horse about that or anything, um, but, yeah, so, it always sucks no matter what, but it especially sucks when you have a citation to pay as well, and a court date, and all that stuff, um, so, anyways, um, I guess I can also, like, sidestep here, give you a little bit of info on, like, what you're actually seeing. Um, I have I just noticed I haven't acknowledged that yet. So I'm doing a voiceover right now. I am not actually driving with this mic right now. Um, this is me driving, though, and my car. I got a dash cam, so I'm really excited because now I'm going to be able to do a bunch of driving videos. And I guess I haven't even gotten to, like, where I am out here. But you know what? We'll keep that a mystery for the moment. Um, being, I will get into that. But let me talk about what you're seeing. So right now I am driving into um, what are called the book cliffs. Um, well, the kind of front wall of it is called the book cliffs. And that um, the book cliffs really can be seen towering over from western Colorado into eastern Utah, so it spans, like, you know, all of that, kind of the northern part of the state, um, and it's where you meet the edge of this, um, shale basin, where it's called the Moncos Shale, and it's a layer of the Colorado Plateau, um, so where I'm driving right now are the layers that are piling on top of the Moncos Shale, um, and it's called the Rowan Plateau, and it is the highest part of the Colorado Plateau. So, I've also not really given much context for why I'm even going into this, so I've also become really into geology lately, <laughs> um, and I've learned a lot about, um, specifically the geology of the Colorado Plateau region, which if you're unaware, that is what encircles the four corners of, um, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico, um, and, um, the Navajo Nation is also centered right around there, um, within the Colorado Plateau on, like, the southern part of it, um, and, but yeah, so anyways, it spans, um, those four states, and, um, so at most of it is in Utah, though, like, the, I think the the largest chunk of it. But anyways, the part I am driving through right now, well, I was driving through 
as it says on August 13th, but this the date was wrong. I had to change that. I also took off the date um, for like when I started making new videos because I already have some more of these that'll be coming out soon. Anyways, I am like really sc scrambled and scattered, but that that's on brand for me. But yeah, so um, really what is special about the Colorado Plateau is that it, um, through all of its like, you know, distortions and uplift that has happened in the region um, because the Colorado Plateau is situated right between um, the main heart of the Rocky Mountains in central Colorado um, and down into northern New Mexico. Um, and then on the western side, there's another smaller range of mountains, which, you know, um, sometimes is considered to be kind of another branch of the Rockies, but really it was a part of another, um, geological event that happened, um, and, um, it's called the Sevier Orogeny, and that's what formed the mountains that are in Utah, um, that go kind of like, um, vertical, the Wasatch Mountain Range, um, and so, yeah, those are kind of like the borders on either side of the plateau, um, and those mountains had lots of, lots of distortion, and, you know, they're uplifted and bent, and the sediments are either, um, bent out of recognition, or there's volcanic, um, flows that covered them, like volcanic basalt flows, um, Interestingly enough, there's actually um, this place called Grand Mesa, which um, includes a lot of the same sediments as you're seeing in this video, um, because they're the very higher parts of the plateau. But Grand Mesa is this a super tall, flat mesa in, um, it's, it's still in western Colorado, but it's like the easternmost part of the Colorado Plateau, like it's the very eastern perimeter, um, because beyond that, all of the Rocky Mountain processes that you see are too volcanic, and therefore they hide all of the older sediments below. Anyway, um, I've gone off on this, like, huge geology side tangent, and I need to, like, get back to, like, you know, my moving process and all that kind of stuff, so let me get, um, let me get back to that. Um, oh, well, let me finish by saying that I, um, I think I did mention this already once in the video, but this is specifically the Rowan Plateau that you're seeing, which, um, is the highest part and youngest sediments. Um, oh, and then something else that I was, I think, meaning to say earlier that I forgot. Um, oh, also, this truck I came up on, like, they just pulled into the road, um, right in front of me, and, like, luckily, like, I saw it with enough time to slow down and react and everything, but it was really weird, and then they pulled right off again, and I was like, what is this guy doing? Um, but anyways, so, side, that was, um, another side note within my side note within the side note, but anyway, so, yeah, so this part of the, um, this highest part of the plateau, the reason why it is carved into all of these mountain peaks, these kind of, like, mini mountain peaks, is because if you actually look, and I'm gonna do like a map video again where I talk about this and show you, but if you look at the map from above, at a satellite image of this area, it looks like, um, literally like the, the veins of a leaf or the branches of a tree, and, which is really cool because, you know, you can connect everything in the universe through fractals, <laughs> really, um, but yeah, so, um, there's this main ridge, um, of this plateau where it's kind of like a mini continental divide where, uh, rainwater, snow water, um, and, um, rivers can only go on either side of it. So we're on the side that goes south, but we're going north into it, if that makes sense. So where this video ends is the Douglas Pass, um, which is where you cross the ridge. So you'll kind of see what, um, I mean, and I'll kind of come back to that later, but I need to go back to my moving experience and everything. So, um, where I left off. So I was talking about how I was living at my sister's house and then, um, oh, also I got a job, um, which was the initial thing that kind of stopped my momentum with ASMR because I got it in June and that's when I like stopped making videos. But then I still continued to make um, a few more videos that I didn't end up posting because they kept getting ruined by certain things. Like I would like, I don't know, like,
like the, some of the files would delete. I tried uploading a video that like only three minutes uploaded to YouTube. It was all glitching out. And then my computer storage was filling up. It was just a whole mess. So yeah, so then I just I, like really fell out of the momentum of doing it. And then like, I never had any recording space or anything that was quiet um, because my sister and her boyfriend and their roommate, um, they all worked from home. And her boyfriend and roommate were both studying for the bar because they're lawyers. So it was like, um, it, there just was never quiet time, which was totally fine because, like, that wasn't my space. Obviously, I was like an invader there. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm not going to blame them for like living their life in their own place. But, anyways, so yeah so i never really got to record i tried i think i tried filming it somewhere in like my car somewhere but there's nowhere in atlanta you can get away from like noise because it's so busy but look at where i am now there's no one like you know i've passed a few cars here and there in this video but like for the most part like no one and there was no one behind me either um the first couple times i did this route to the douglas pass I've actually gone all the way over it before and up into a town called Dinosaur in northwestern Colorado. Oh, I don't know if I even mentioned that specifically. This is western Colorado, not um, northeastern Utah. This is Colorado. A lot of these sediments are actually found in northeastern Utah as well, south of the Winta mountain range, which is the really weird horizontal mountain range in northeastern Utah. If you look at a map or a terrain map of it, it's an anomaly because it sticks out amongst the other mountain ranges in the west are all semi-vertical um, according to the way that U.S. is oriented now. Um, there was actually times in history, you know, with the break of, of Pangea where um, the whole western and southern or no, 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 it was tilted the other way. The northeastern part of the U.S., like Maine and New Hampshire, were like by the equator, um, because the U.S. has been tilted that much. Well, I keep saying U.S., I mean to say North America. Um, excuse me um, for my U.S. bias. But anyways, um, the reason why I keep picturing it as the U.S. is because the geology book I've been studying keeps showing, like, superimposed images of the U.S. shape over, like, the way it would have looked in history and the way it was twisted and stuff. So that's why I keep thinking to say that. But really, um, it's all about North America, the continent, um, which is made of um, multiple, like, I guess you could say proto-continents, but that's not necessarily, like, the geological term that's accepted. I think they, I think there's Craton is, like, one of the examples, but I'm not super sure about that, so don't take me up on that. Um, but I will be doing, like, well-informed geology videos at some point, um, where I will be, like, referring to that book and maybe reading some stuff about it, showing you guys some strat stratigraphic charts. Um, there was another weirdo just, like, off on the side of the road pointed the wrong way. Um, I don't know why these truckers are like, let's just, like, chill on the snow. I would never want to pull onto snow like that. Um, because I would be afraid of how, how would I get myself out of it if I got stuck. Um, but anyways, those big trucks with big tires don't have to worry about those things like I do, though. Um, my car now is better than the one. Sorry about that. If you're noticing that the audio keeps cutting out, it's because my mic keeps, like, just shutting off like it just will stop recording it's really weird um but yeah i'm using this new like usb device where you can plug in multiple usb outlets and then it filters it all into like one so that might be screwing it up because i'm using my blue yeti right now of course um and so yeah but i did get a new mic that is better quality for um Primarily, I got that for, like, my music, um, to record some better acoustic stuff, but, um, this mic I'm gonna continue using mostly for ASMR, because the Blue Yeti really is, like, an icon of ASMR, let's be honest here, um, but the exciting thing is that now I can use this and that other mic together, um, to do binaural videos as well, um, which binaural has kind of fallen out of, like, the main 
sphere of ASMR, I feel like, because, like, I mean, Blue Yetis can't technically do binaural, but they have a setting where you can, like, split the audio into two, into stereo, I guess, um, and, like, then make it binaural, but, um, really the only way to do, like, a true binaural is to use two different mic sources that are on two different sides, and a lot of people used to do that a lot, binaural was, like, in every ASMR title for, like, a long time, but I've, I've just kind of realized that that's really not been a thing for a long time, and I think what that comes down to is because, um, it's because, um, of the rise in, like, lo-fi ASMR, um, and more, it being just more accessible to people who don't have, um, the, you know, means to get, like, a billion mics, you know, and I think that's a good thing. I actually really have enjoyed that trend in ASMR when lo-fi became big and people just, like, doing hand movements and personal attention triggers became, like, really big, um, and that became the main sphere of ASMR I became attracted to as well, like, really, my my, you know, perspective on this comes from the fact that I put myself into being surrounded by, um, only those types of ASMRs, but anyways, um, but still, I do think that was, like, a, a, a still a movement in ASMR, um, anyway, and, um, but yeah, so I think that is why, is that it's, like, a lot of people use, like, Apple mics, or they use just one Blue Yeti, and people are just not focused on doing the binaural thing anymore. I still do really find binaural whispering to be, like, um, really nice. Like, I still really like it. Um, but I don't necessarily, like, miss it enough to be, like, upset that it's less common, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But anyways, so, yeah, just something that I've kind of noticed. Um, but yeah, I'm surprised at how long this is because I'm like, how am I not up at the pass already? <laughs> um in, like, the drive, um, but, yeah, I mean, I think I'm starting to head towards the ascent, I don't, I was stopped paying attention to the video when I was going on that spiel about ASMR, but I think, yep, I see, you see that switchback sign, that means there's gonna be a big curve coming up, um, I actually really like this format of recording, I've never tried something like this before, where I do a vo ASMR voiceover of a video, um, like, as I'm watching the video. This is really cool. I actually learned how to do this type of, um, like, music editing over a video. Um, wow, that, like, ugh, my windshield is looking crusty when you see, like, the sunlight shine on it. Oh, that is, like awful. I actually bought Windex for this purpose so that I can, like, clean my windshield and so I can wipe off the lens every time I start filming. Um, but it's definitely not the lens that is causing it to look really bad right now. Um, because the lens, it, I, I just opened it out of the box and it still had, like, the little, like, plastic sheet over the lens. Um, it actually, I've got a used dash cam, but they, like, refurbished it, I guess. They did something to, like, make it packaged up like it was new again, um, but yeah, it definitely was missing, like, like, that thing had to come with some sort of manual, because there was no manual in the box when I opened it, and so I didn't understand how to use it at all, um, and I couldn't find any info online, because, like, it's, like, this really specific niche dash cam, so it was weird, um, but I ended up figuring it out, um, and I really like it. It has, like, a wide-angle lens, um, so, like, you actually see more than I could see when I'm driving, because when I'm driving, I would have those, like, kind of, um, I guess, like, pieces between, um, the glass, you know, between the front windows and the windshield. There's those, um, I don't, can't even think of a fucking word for that, like, just the pieces that, the part of the car that comes down, like, I cannot think of a good word for that, but anyways, um, you know, and then you don't have to worry about that with this, because the wide angle allows you to see, um, you know, as if those weren't there, basically, 
you still can see the very top of my hood and like windshield wiper but that's because if i moved the camera any higher um you like wouldn't really be able to see you'd just be seeing the sky basically so yeah anyways i am gonna continue making adjustments as i go though um to try and get like you know a little bit less of the car a minute um to get better video quality better exposure um I turned the exposure down a little bit after this video because I noticed, like, as you can see, when I'm facing where the sun is setting, it looks like the sky is completely white, um, as if it's cloudy. It was not cloudy at all. It was super sunny this day. Um, but the sun was setting behind those mountains, so that's why the exposure was, like, really being overloaded. Um, but yeah, um, once we get up the pass, though, you'll get to see a little sunset um, image where the colors are not that distorted and you can actually see like color of the sunset. So that's really exciting. Um, I took a really beautiful picture at the top too. As you can see, there's this tiny little spot of ice. Um, I specifically waited weeks to go back to this pass because I like going here and there's a lot of places to pull off on the road where you can chill and like, I like to bring my little, um, Gitalele instrument and, like, play that, or, like, chill out in the car, um, but anyways, so, um, but yeah, they had really bad snow a few weeks ago, the last time that it snowed where I live, um, which is, like, you know, kind of far from here, but not super duper, um, um, oh shit, what was I saying? Um, I don't really remember. That's okay, though. Um, but yeah, I was basically just talking about how I like to come here. Oh, the snow. So yeah, it snowed, um, where I live, um, during this kind of, like, you know, snowstorm that hit a lot of areas, and this area got hit way worse, like, really bad, because it's higher altitudes, um, and a lot of the foliage you see, um, are these juniper trees, um, the higher we get, the less you'll see sagebrush, but you may have seen some sagebrush at the beginning, but yeah, now we're mostly surrounded by, um, juniper trees, and then the, the pine trees are getting, like, taller and taller, so they're kind of becoming less juniper-like, in a sense, because juniper trees are really, like, kind of short, bushy type, um, pine trees, but they're still for sure a tree and not a bush, because they have, like, a pronounced main stem, like a tree does, um, whereas bushes just, like, branch off right from the beginning, um, but yeah, um, but yeah, juniper trees, um, love the snow, um, so they live in these higher altitude areas where there's snow, but not much rain, um, because, west of the Rockies, in most of these basins out here, um, and in the mountains, there's a lot of high pressure areas that, because, you know, higher mountains, um, higher altitude, you're in areas of higher pressure, so what that means for weather is that it actually repels a lot of rain and rainstorms, um, in the summer and warmer months, so it's really dry here, and it's semi-arid in a desert, like a semi-desert, um, which is, that's why it's called the steppes, um, which are called, also called high desert, but steppe is, like, the proper term for it, um, like, the bi the geobiological term, um, is steppe, which is semi-desert, but it's, um, always, like, high basins that have been, like, uplifted in between mountains, and then the mountains themselves, they all have very high pressure, like I said, so anyways, um, the only precipitation they really get and mass in these areas is the snow in the winter. So that's what a lot of the foliage here lives off of, is like winter snow, but not much rain. So the plants here aren't like, you know, they can live without rain, basically. Um, but not like without moisture at all. Um, well, obviously, because no life can, so that was kind of stupid to say, but you get my point, hopefully. Um, but yeah, when you're far away, all these tr juniper trees, um, on the mountains really look like, it looks like there's an upper, like, black layer of sediment on these mountains when you're far away, and then you get close.
closer and you realize it's just these trees that darken um, the way it looks from far away. Um, but yeah, we're right about to reach the pass. We're here. Um, as you can see, this is the end of the river valley. So we're now crossing this main ridge. And then I'm going to pull into this little, um, really convenient pullover that's huge. Actually, I don't know why I said little. Um, it's covered in ice and snow right now, which was kind of horrifying because I was like, if I turn off of this too quickly, I could slide off the cliff. But, you know, that's okay. But yeah, I am going to do a 360 for you guys here so that you can see that it's the top of the mountain ridge um so as you can see it goes down on that side um and that's to the north and that's the opposite of where we came from and then i'm going to tilt around and show you the direction from which we came and that is the south um and i'm going to go like real close to the edge um so that you can really see um but yeah so that is the video for today um i am really excited to get back into it and i'm going to be doing plenty of stuff to come lots of driving videos lots of canyons lots of mountains and lots of crazy stuff so yeah um i will see you guys in the next one Bye bye